Through the first eight episodes of this series, we've been discussing how we can solve a linear system computationally and how we can gain further understanding of linear systems through the use of matrix decompositions. But we've only been considering square matrices. And in real world applications of computational linear algebra, we're not always going to be able to work with square matrices. Howdy folks, welcome to the ninth episode in this computational linear algebra series where we are going to discuss non-square linear systems. Before we begin, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, do not hesitate to let me know in the comment section down below, and I hope that by the end of this video, you will have earned your like and or your subscription. Let's begin by recalling some of the complexities with matrix decompositions. If we have a square matrix, a 3 by 3 square matrix, we know that we can decompose it into two matrices that are 3 by 3 in size. But we could also do a 3 by 2 by a 2 by 3, or a vector and a covector. So long as these n dimensions match up, we will be able to represent our A matrix. And this originally made matrix decompositions a little bit tricky, but we got around this by establishing the rule that we're just going to copy the dimensions of our A matrix for any of the matrices that are part of our decomposition. And that's really convenient with square matrices since we can just keep tacking on different square matrices of the same dimension of our A matrix. But that's obviously something that's not going to work with non-square matrices. For non-square matrices, if we were to decompose a non-square A matrix into two matrices, these K dimensions would need to be equivalent. But then we need to play this game all over again. And so what we need is a rule that works just as well as presetting the dimensions to being the same dimensions of our a matrix. But we obviously can't use the same rule as is for square matrices because the dimensions for the matrix multiplication would not work out. Now recall that all of this uh, that we've been discussing so far is with regard to the linear system. We're interested in solving this equation. I know nine episodes and we're only solving this simple equation, but it is a lot more complex than you might think. But remember, we're solving this with our structured Gaussian elimination algorithm, which gives us an upper triangular system that we then throw into our back substitution algorithm, which gives us our solution. And ideally, we'll want to use this same methodology for a non-square case. Now, with everything being focused on this linear system, I want to remind everyone what the utility in the matrix decompositions are. They allow us to gain a different view of our linear system through the decomposition. For more general matrix decompositions, such as LU and LDV, our system now begins to look like this. Whereas if the matrix is positive definite, we can look at it through the lens of the Cholesky and LDL transpose decompositions. Remember, we used our LU decomposition to show why our methodology with structured Gaussian elimination and back substitution works in obtaining our solution or our x vector. If we restrict everything to being positive definite, we could do the same thing with Cholesky. Now I haven't introduced any applications yet for LDV and LDL transpose, but if you continue to follow along with this series, you just might in future episodes. Now if we want to use our current method of pairing structured Gaussian elimination with bag substitution to solve a non-square linear case, we'll want to show that we'll be able to perform a LU decomposition for a non-square linear system. And the way that we'll do that is by establishing some rules. The first rule that we're going to establish is that our upper triangular matrix needs to have the same exact dimensions as our A matrix just a copy over as just like we did with the square case. But this time our lower triangular matrix is going to have dimensions of M by M. It's going to be square. That's because square matrices 
are really easy to work with, as we saw earlier, where we can just start slapping on more and more square matrices of the same dimension, and we will still be able to get out the original matrix we put in. These two rules will give us a Lu decomposition that looks a little something like this for the three row by two column case. You can see a square lower triangular matrix here and an upper triangular matrix here. Now we need to remember that triangular matrices don't get their name just because in the square case they look square visually. If we take a look at the two row by three column case, we get a two by two lower triangular matrix, right multiplied by a two by three upper triangular matrix, which you can see visually does not look very triangular. Remember that for an upper triangular matrix, all the values below our diagonal are zero. With a lower triangular matrix case, all the values above our diagonal are zero. But what about LDV? How would we do this matrix decomposition? Well, we just slap on another square matrix. And so our D matrix would just be another two by two diagonal matrix. And this is the ease of these rules that we've set. We can just continue to keep slapping on square matrices as long as the last matrix is restricted to being the same dimensions as our A matrix. Let's say we wanted to decompose our A matrix into five matrices. Well, we could have four square matrices and then a matrix with the same dimensions and we would have everything work out exactly the way we want it to. So now let's take a look at what we need to do to our code to be able to work with non-square matrices. Of course, you can find all of this code linked in the description down below on my GitHub page and we'll be working in the ninth episode directory called non-square. We'll be working with our linalg package and changing that up. And then we have these three different driver codes for the LU decomposition, LDV matrix decomposition, and our code to help us with solving. And let's start by performing the LU decomposition because after all we need to be able to do the Lu decomposition for all of this to work out. But now we have rules that will allow us to do that. So you can see our standard driver code here, random A matrix. We're going to play with that a little bit. We have our Lu decomposition. We're outputting all that to our terminal. And as a check, we're computing A minus Lu, which should give us back the zero matrix if everything is working out properly. In our linalg package, you can see that nothing's changed with our Lu function. We're still calling structured Gaussian elimination, so that's pretty good. The one change we've had to make here is we've had to add in this n variable in line 31 to keep track of our columns. Now we need to keep track of our rows and columns separately. We can't just have one variable tracking everything. I also had to add in a few things uh, to help us out with regard to whether or not we're performing a Lu decomposition or an, uh, or we're converting to an upper triangular system. Because remember, we can do that with both of these. That's why we have this if-else statement and this other if-else statement. And also, we have had to include a loop here to treat our rows and columns separately. Otherwise, the core code has really not changed too much. Whenever we write new code, we want to test and make sure that it is still working for uh, the older use cases, and then we can try to test the newer use cases. So let's do a 3x3 three three A matrix first here. So we're going to call this code here. You can see we have A matrix, lower triangular, upper triangular, and we have a 0 matrix back for our check. So everything's working out for the square case. Now let's see what happens when we add more rows than columns. We're going to do a 5 by 3 matrix to see if that all works. Remember, most of the changes that we made is just with regard to tracking another index and restricting the dimensions of our lower triangular matrix, which were already being restricted before. We'll rerun this code. You can see 5 rows by 3 columns, a lower triangular matrix here, upper triangular matrix here, and the zero matrix, so it's working out. 
Now let's try the use case of more columns and rows. It's always a good idea to try different dimensions and all the different possibilities when you're writing code with these different functions. So we're going to do a 3 by 7 matrix. And we rerun this code. You can see a random A matrix, lower triangular matrix here, which is 3 by 3 in size, which is exactly what we would expect. We have an upper triangular matrix here that's a little bit hard to read, but our 0 matrix is still there when we do our check. And so everything is working for the Lu decomposition. So we should be able to go ahead and solve a linear system with this methodology. But before we do that, let's take a look at LDV. We're going to start off by doing a 5x5 five five case. But let's take a look at what we've done to change our LDV function. So here we have our LDV function in line 55. And we're still calling our Lu decomposition because that's what's helping us out. Again, you can see in line 61, we are keeping track of another dimension. And we have to have this other loop now to help us manage two different dimensions now since we're not dealing with square matrices. We need to track both of these. So again, we need to test the older case of a square matrix. So let's do a 5x5. Five five. And we're going to do LDV driver, and we'll run this. You can see we have a 5x5 five five matrix, a square lower triangular matrix, diagonal matrix. with. It. Then we have our modified upper triangular matrix, and our check is the zero vector. So everything's working exactly how we want it to. Let's try the case of more rows than columns now. We'll do a 5x4 case. Again, similar thing, square lower triangular matrix, square diagonal matrix, modified upper triangular matrix with a couple of floating point arithmetic errors, but at the end of the day, when we perform our check of A minus L D V in line 19, we get this zero vector. We have one more case to test out, which is more columns than rows. So we're going to do A 4 by 6. We can rerun our code. 4 by 6 random matrix. Square lower triangular square diagonal, modified upper triangular matrix, and a zero matrix. So everything is working exactly how we want it to. So now let's have some fun and actually try to solve our linear system. Because remember, all of this is just with the motivation of solving linear systems or finding ways to manipulate linear systems and gain better insight into them. And that insight is obtained through the de matrix decompositions. So when we look at our driver code, you can see we're generating a random A matrix, a random B vector. We're performing our structured Gaussian elimination algorithm. Then we're passing that into our back substitution algorithm. And then we're performing AX minus B, which should result in the zero vector to check that our result is correct. On the back end, in our LinAlg package, you've seen what we've done for structured Gaussian elimination. We just are managing the different uh, indices there. Now in our back sub function, we have a very similar thing going on where we have in line 11 something to manage our dimensions. We also have this if else statement to make it work and I'll touch on that in a moment but then we just have similar loops just as we did before. Let's run our solve driver code and see what happens for a 5x5 five five square case. You can see we have a 5x5A five five matrix. We have a 5-dimensional B vector, upper triangular matrix. Here's our changed B vector. Here's our solution. And when we perform the check, we get the zero vector out. So everything is working according to plan. What happens when we do more columns than rows. We're going to do a 5 by 6 matrix here. We can rerun our code. And you can see we have 5 rows by 6 columns, 5 dB vector, upper triangular system with these values right here. And here's our solution. Notice we have this 0 at the end, and that's because we don't need it. It's one of the weird things that happens with 
non-square systems is you kind of get a few throwaway placements in our vectors. But with our check, we have the zero vector, so we know that everything is working exactly according to plan. We have one more case to test out, which is going to be the case of more rows than columns. Let's see what happens when we do a 7 by 5 A matrix. We get this error message, an index error message. Remember, we need the dimensions of our linear system to match up. So we need to make our B vector a 7 dimensional vector. We can rerun this code now, and you can see everything runs. We have a 7 by 5 matrix here, 7 rows by 5 columns, 7 dimensional B vector, upper triangular, ma upper triangular matrix, or changed B vector, our solution, but hold on a minute, our check is not working. And you can see we have two values here, the last two values that are non zero. Let's try this with a little bit different of a scenario and see if anything changes. See if we notice anything. We have a two dimension difference between our rows and columns. So let's see what happens if we do three. Remember we're going to need to change the random B vector that we're generating. We can rerun this code and hold on a minute we have three values here in our check that are non-zero. So this clearly is not working. But why isn't it working? To understand why, we need to examine a non-square upper triangular system with the case of more rows than columns. Notice how if we do matrix multiplication here, everything kind of works out, but C3 is restricted to being zero. That's because if we have 0x1 plus 0x2, C3 is just going to be restricted to 0. Let's examine our C vector right here. For, that, for this to work, the last three values here would have to be equivalent to 0, but they're not. And that's why we're not getting a solution out of these. And this is one more complication that comes about when dealing with non-square matrices. So how, do, how would we solve a non-square linear system with more rows than columns because clearly we can't have these last values being restricted to zero. You can rerun this again because maybe it's just a fluke but again you see the same thing three non-zero values on our check and three values of our C vector that should be zero but they're not and that's where a problem begins to arise. Everything else works out quite well when using this methodology to solve non-square linear systems, except for when we have more rows than columns. So you'll see I conveniently had this line to raise an exception already in here commented out. We can comment out these lines because these lines are just in here to make it work. But we're going to add this exception because we're not going to be able to find an adequate solution. So with this exception uncommented out. We can run our code and you can see we raise this exception more rows than columns and it says use a different method. Is there even a different method though that we could use to solve a non-square linear system with more rows than columns? The answer is yes, but that method is important enough that it is going to get its own dedicated video next time. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, of course, please feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. And I hope you all learned something, or were entertained maybe, and I hope to see you all again next time.